Hello and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table, we have a new series beginning. This is the Store Championship from X Planet Games in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. And this is game one from round one. And on the left, we have Kevin Austin playing Martell, Lord of the Crossing. And on the right, we have Julian playing House Targaryen, Banner of the Rose. And as a special treat here, uh, touching the gloves on the left, we got Kevin Austin on the commentary with me. Kevin, say hi. Hello. And Kevin's going to help me commentate this video and let us know what he was thinking, even though he probably can't remember at this point, because at the time of this recording was quite a few weeks after this game. Um, but we're trying to... Yeah, I, I try to forget these things right away. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we got set up here on your side, Kev? So on the left I have uh, King's Road, a duped Edric Dane, and uh, Ariane Martel. On uh, Julian's side, it looks like he has a Drogo and a Viserion, if I can see that yeah, correctly. Yeah, I believe that is Viserion. Sorry about the glare of this story, guys. On the right, we had some glare in these videos, so... I apologize in advance for that. Uh, tried to catch it as best we could, but yeah, in that one spot there on the front, uh, we're going to have that character. Whichever character is in that spot is pretty much going to be a bright light of sun, so we'll try to catch it before it moves into that spot. But. So on his setup, he also has a uh, Illyrio's Estate, so it's not bad with the three card setup with uh, spending all eight gold. Yes, that is true, and having Drogo on the table right off the bat is always good. Yeah, it's definitely a threat that you have to try to neutralize or deal with. Yep. Yeah, if, There's two in the first plots here. Yep. And if you can't deal with Drogo right off the bat, you pretty much have to start thinking, do I have the Claim Soak to handle the you know one or two military challenges around? Or the plot, for example, which you just played, Calm Over Westeros. Yes. Unfortunately, it takes care of some of my Claim Soak, as he's played uh, March to the Wall here. <laughs> so he marches Viserion, and if I remember correctly, I will be marching Edric Dane and his Duke. Yeah, which would probably be the better call. I mean, it did help you get two cards more off your setup, but it was really only a two gold investment, so... Yeah, and Aaron will have constant presence throughout the game, where Edric Dane costs me money. Exactly. Uh, and how many Edrics do you think you're running in your deck? Did we just say goodbye to him for the rest of the game, for sure? Yeah, I think it was just the two, yeah. so I think we're fine. So, you see, I've called the military there, just to help out with the defense on Drogo, and uh, Julian will be going first here. Yeah, it's good to good combo rest is a great counter against Cal Drogo because usually unless they drop the two claim plot on you. Um, it's usually usually can nullify him for a turn. So we have a King's Road played by Julian. Get some econ burst economy here. He's just considering everything in his hand. Probably aim to get out a couple characters rather than just uh, one large one, but he does have enough to play Danny if he wishes. This is true, but he plays. He goes for a, what is and a, a, a tainted on uh, Arian Martel, which is the remove an intrigue icon attachment. Yep. And he played a uh, Paramore off his King's Road, but he's, he changed his mind to uh, Rhaegal. And it looks like Sir Joris hits the table, and he's sitting on a resource. For my marshalling with a Rose Road, so I have five gold and a King's Road. And let's see what I do. <laughs> Spend two for a trader. Love that card, card of replacement, but with an extra little quality bump there by the choice of the top two. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to, gonna have to go back to Martel soon just so I can play more uh, Green Blood Traders. I crave them all the time. And as the Zoom Martel cards keep getting spoiled, I keep getting more excited to build a deck again and oh, get back to the proper house I should be playing. Spend two more gold for Gaston Gray. And the last gold for uh, Desert Scavenger. So, not really any big bodies, but Gaston Gray is a way to take care of a big body, so. It's uh, it's a good card and definitely can uh, negate your kind of poor start here. But you do have Arion, which could lead into something bigger dropping on the board out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have no military icons at the moment, but uh, since I've called military on Common Westeros, I'm not too worried. Mm -hmm. But he will get some unopposed power if he decides to do both of those challenges. And just to keep in mind, this is pre-first snow, I believe. Uh, yes. 
which we saw a lot of these Lord of the Crossing decks um, with these smaller characters um, before First Snow, but since then I don't know if they're they're run that often or doing that well. So we just saw a uh, intrigue challenge from Jorah Mormont, and he took my Doran's game after it was out of post. <laughs> Always sucks to see that card so early in the game. Yeah. So it looks like that's his, the only challenge that he decided to do, and I'm just considering my own. I'm surprised he didn't do any militaries just to grab some unopposed power. But Yeah, I think he's just thinking for the defense here. Yeah, he's trying to keep you slowed down. and You never know with Arion on the table, right? Like you might expose yourself more than you need to. Oh, sorry, it's zero, sorry. So I'm coming in with a power challenge off the Desert Scavenger, which is actually zero because of Lord of the Cross. Yeah, I saw you try to grab that power there, you cheater. Yes. Uh, it was early in the morning. Yeah. It was first round. Who am I kidding? I've done that probably myself. I hate this agenda for that purpose. I always forget the minus ones, and sometimes I forget even the plus twos when planning. Yeah. I try to so forget. I'm coming in with an entry from the Green Bullet Trader and decides to let it go on a post. And is that a Jakaris? Yes, oh. uh, that looks like I discarded Jakaris, and also oh, is, yeah. I would have guessed that he had it on his hand, uh, wow. saving the Rhaegal yeah. off and of that. The, and the, the dollars sitting there behind him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I activate Arian to uh, put out Serio. Nice way to get rid of an attachment. That... Yeah, cool. but of course it's non-terminal, so he's getting that oh, back for cool. next turn. But it's going to cost him a dollar to exactly. reinvest yep. that. Exactly. And the first dollar he spent on it basically did nothing for him anyway. So. Yeah. So coming in with Zero on my third challenge here and just stealthing Drogo. Now if he has another Jakaris, he might say goodbye to Zero, but it looks like your intrigue hit was de right definitely time. money. <laughs> yeah, so he decides to block with Rhaegal, but it still uh, goes through and Jorah is dead. Give me action. Nope. Me neither. You get it. And uh, Julian gets dominance, and we move to the next plot. So, not an awful turn. I like playing using Arian's ability to get another 5 on the board, so it's not a waste of economy. This is true. You are completely right on that. So, uh, I don't recall exactly, but I think he's going to... I think he's going to play around Gaston Gray a bit, but eventually that always comes back around. Yeah, be we'll because in, in his deck, like, what's he choosing? Uh, like, your targets most likely are Khal Drogo, Danny, and maybe Nymeria? Yeah. So he's got to take one of those on the chin, and he doesn't exactly have the board presence to handle that right now, so... Yeah, so, so but Jorah's, or, uh, sorry, Drogo is still fine not attacking because he still grants the two military challenges. This is true. But of course not this turn because Julian has opted to play uh, Fort 5 position against my March to the Wall. So he has marched Rhaegal and I am marching a Green Blood Trader. Uh, he's continuing to go first on my selection there. So do you remember at this tournament how many players we had? Was it 12, 14? I don't remember. Uh, I there think was around it that was number. around 14, yeah. yeah. It was four rounds in the top four, I believe. Yes, yes it was. So looks like he's pre-counting out his drops here, deciding what he wants to play. So he has some options, that's for sure. Yep. Plays King's Road, uses it immediately. Put out Paramore. And a Drogon. Oh, wow. And a Raid of Warriors. <laughs> Decent recovery there. Not bad at all. It's just too bad. He's so we both just have to keep in mind the uh, uh, fort five position. Yes, this yes, and it is too bad. He played it. I, I, it would have been nicer for him not to have. But I mean, the economy off it is maybe what he needed, really. Yeah, it's unlikely that he's playing. He might be playing calm as well, which would have probably been better in this case. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, So I'm just considering my own marshalling here. Five gold, King's Road at my disposal. And, uh, hand. There's, there's me trying to adjust the uh, 
lens, uh, the polarized lens filter thingy majigger to uh, try to reduce some of that glare after I noticed. Um, I did have a first round buy, uh, I believe, at this tournament. I was also the tournament organizer, so that helped me make sure everything got started, which was nice. So Julian considering his challenges. Comes in with military of three from the Braider Warriors. and kill my desert scavenger. I assumed you haven't triggered Serio yet, right? Uh, well, it's fortified position turn. Oh, yes, that's right. I've already forgotten. <laughs> also, no Arion tricks, no Paramour tricks, no Serio tricks. Nope. But uh, more importantly, more no Drobo tricks. Yes, that is true. I believe that's his... It's a learned skill. He opted for no more challenges. It seemed uh, his hands indicated... Yeah, he's definitely playing very defensive here. So I'm just considering the order I'll do my challenges in no order to get the... Probably intending to winning the third challenge, I would guess. Power. Just to get the other extra power off of uh, Lord of the Cross. So here's a power challenge with Arion for three strength. <laughs> he went to grab the Renown, but remembered his character was blank. It's un that's the unfortunate thing about fortified position is you just forget about it immediately. Yeah, yeah it's almost like you have to put that plot like right in the middle of the table between both players. Yeah. Oh, lucky me, I intrigue and get the attainted that will <laughs> not come back anymore. Nice. And my military for five here. He defense with Drogon, and then Brave Warriors dies. Uh, so, reaction to winning? I take the power off crossing, and I don't think there was any dominance that turn. Yeah, because you guys are all both knelt out, no gold left. Yeah, looked like a tie for Dom. Yep, so I'm at three, and he is at three as well. Though I believe there's only two cards in his hand, and I probably have four or five, I would guess. Yeah. You have at least four. I would think. Um, Alright, so you flip into training with the Matoshi. You decide to give your opponent three gold. That's how I look yeah, at it. Yeah. And he has... Is that rebuilding? Yeah, that is rebuilding. So he wants to shuffle three cards from his discard pile back into his deck? Yep. So of course, Chikaros <laughs> is a good choice. And some dragon action. Yep, not that right. <coughs> and the stat line on rebuilding is 5-3-1. Uh, if I'm right. No, five five one. I think it's five five, five, five one. Five one. Reserve of six, I believe. Yeah. Sure. So ten gold. You have some big bombs in your hand there, or are you just looking to flood the board, go a little wide? Uh, it could go either way. Uh, I'm guessing just because Arion and Serial are on the board, probably Doran or the Red Viper, but it could be Nymeria. Hmm. Or it could be a variety of small things. Good turn for trading. Because he got junk? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your opponent there stated this is a good turn for trading. And you sort of replied with, well, why? Because you have lots of junk? <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see. Yes, playing trading when your opponent only has two cards in their hand is usually my favorite. <laughs> which was a great play, obviously. And yeah, so he throws a milk on Sirio, which is not bad at all. And a dupe on Drogo, which he decided to play face down underneath Drogo. I believe he mistaked oh, Drogo should. with Arya, yeah, but it uh, looks like you're catching. No, I think he, they, he was just generally putting all dupes face down, so I just remind him that uh, it's not how it goes. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. You would but now he just now. makes him more juicy for Gaston Gray if he ever seven, jumps under there. This is true. I, I, I might have kept that Drogo in hand, actually. 
Um, I mean, I don't know what else he has. I mean, he does have a card in hand, but if you enter and get that other one, it's always nice if he keeps one in hand, especially when he has money and a dragon on the board, just to keep you guessing, right? To keep that pressure on. Yeah, but it's still good as a military claim. That's true. But of course, as he's opted to go first, he's not going to be getting the use out of uh, multiple military challenges, really. Mm -hmm. So over to me, and I throw out a green blood trader, considering the two cards from the deck there. And I pick one of them, and I put the other one back. <laughs> Look at you following the card text. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could have put both of them back, but it's not really. That is true. <laughs> That's true. I don't know why you would ever do that, but it's nice to give you that option, I guess. I guess with reserve, sometimes you might not want to hold an extra. I mean, if your other cards are just that great, but. So, just mulling over what's remaining in my hand. If I remember correctly, this is where we see. Oh, guys, this is where we see Doran. Doran, I miss that guy. Oh, he's so fun. I know, I like him so much until he gets milked, then I cry. But. And I get out my bone way. Oh. I think that's a one of in this deck at the moment. Yeah, turn three bone way. I mean, it's it's okay. So it was nice to see it on setup or turn one, but it may still get you some power. That's for sure. Yep, yep, yep. So I also got out a king's road for future use. So that would be uh, yeah. If I draw into the red viper, having a king's road out already is usually uh, money for sure. He's coming at me with a Dornish Paramour, and he's going to get use out of the ability. Or... That's what he's picking there. I think he's trying to pick Doran, but... Yeah, he's mulling over here. Of course, uh, he could have... He could pull in Doran or Arion. Or he could pull in Doran, and then Drakaris using Drogon. Oh, uh, Which would not true. be half bad. But, uh, and he decides to pass on challenges. Considering my options here, uh, I only have one military icon on board. Could use Arion to get another one, but I'm not sure uh, what's in the hand there. But if he decides to, even if uh, Syria was their challenge, he could still defend fully the five strength. Now, him going so defensive, I mean, you are you got Lord of the Crossing. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, this is how I look at it. If he's going first, he could poke at you and you're either going to save stuff behind so that you can do all three challenges or you're not or you're going to defend which kneels out some options which maybe you don't get to do all three challenges like you kind of know you're going to save one of each icon at least so he might be able to get some claim of either type maybe still some power i, I don't know like in, in this case what would you think his best move would be just seeing seeing it right now uh like i don't, I, definitely, I don't know if passing yeah, he's is probably the right trying thing. to play defensive on the uh on the military there because he doesn't want to lose any of his existing characters mm. i guess there's the fear of tears right so keeping that dupe on drogon is pretty pretty serious because if he loses drogon it's like he's got no shot yeah drogo but yes or, yeah sorry drogo that's what i meant cal drogo drogon drogo they're close so i threw an area in that first intrigue challenge there so I'm thinking I have a use for her. Though I guess she was still needed if I would left Doran behind to win the challenge as there was minus, it would be minus one on the Paramore and the Green Blood Trader if I threw them in. I need one card so I thought I might as well get removed. So I'm coming in with Sirio at just three. I need defense with Drogon. Well, at least you should get a bone weight trigger off this. If uh, but you are mulling over this, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I might be thinking I might have Ariel Hota. Oh, okay. Yep. Here yeah. we go. The action's triggered. There he is. Yeah. Get out of here, dragon. So it's, I'd say that's a decent use considering how defensive he was. Yes. So he gets rid of that uh, dupe off of. Oh no, he reconsiders and gets rid of the paramour and stuff. Yeah, I think that's a safer play. Yeah. I come in with Doran, who is at six. Uh, so, so I'm going to get uh, Stolen Power, the power off cross, of uh, Lord of the Crossing, and uh, Insight off Doran. 
So it looks like you are at six power, I believe, and he's at three. Yep, looks like it. That sticky finger Dracaris turn. So I should be at four cards, it looks like, including one which is Arian. Next and Julian's just stating that sticky fingered uh, Dracaris pull on uh, first turn definitely uh, changed the game, he's saying. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to just play it safe until you see the Dracaris go away. To definitely would have slowed down my uh, yep. variants there. Yeah, it just makes you have to do your challenges like you know, with different thoughts in mind based on your minus one and your plus two and that kind of thing, right? Yeah. So confiscation flipped on your side, and uh, wildfire flipped on his. Yeah. So just getting rid of that milk poppy opens up Serio to spread military icons around, so I can uh, not so dependent on uh, just himself or Ariel. Yes. Correct. And stealth is always good. That is true. So I got rid of uh, Paramore and Green Blood Trader on my side from the Wildfire. Which are fine choices in my opinion. Keeping keeping the Hotai out there is, is a good call just for you know, when you know his deck's a military focused deck most likely. Yeah. At least with the cards he has on board, this game is going military focused for him, but he just can't seem to get it going. So you getting more military icons out, especially high strength yeah. ones like Hotas, really helps. Yeah, I find it odd that he's uh, when he gets has the initiative, he's choosing to go first. Just because uh, as I'm playing a crossing deck, uh, going for all three challenges kind of leaves me exposed. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, And it's weird because he always ends up choosing to pass, so I think he would have yeah. been better off letting you go first to even react to what you play, but most of the times yeah. he had rarely any cards and rarely any options, so I guess he didn't. it wouldn't matter what you did, he'd still play the same cards, but I mean, when challenge phase comes around, you're right. I definitely sometimes like letting the cross decks go first earlier in the game, just to see them basically, you know, blow out and kneel everything, and then just let me come back and Try to get my effects off, but when you have that gas and grace sitting out there, that definitely changes things and makes your opponent think differently too. And you Absolutely. you can be a little more aggressive too, right? And try to bait your opponent into coming at you after you go first. Yeah. So using King's Road again, probably spit out Ariane because she's baller. <laughs> yes, she is. Oh, I'm going further. There he is. The man on the horse, the Red Viper. So sitting on two gold after playing the Red Viper. So I know playing against these crossing decks, once the Viper gets out, if you have the board to uh, to get the other challenges off, you know he's going to be in that last challenge. And you, yeah. you're just going to have to sit there doing math every damn challenge to try to understand how much is going to be left coming at you in that Red Viper challenge so that you can try to reduce the amount of explosive power gain he's going to get on you. And, uh, with so I threw Dawn on there as well. Oh, even worse. So, so with Doran out, uh, I think this is turn four. So he's getting plus six for uh, 13 <laughs> strength right back. Wow. And he can be thrown a stealth from Sirio to make sure he gets the uh, extra strength through to add to his uh, fake renown ability there. Yeah, it's not half bad. A lot of it will happen this turn. It's really considering his challenges here. So it looks like he's going to go with the military with Drogo. He's sitting on five gold. Looks like two cards in hand. Yes. So if I was a betting man, I would say there was a Drakara somewhere there that he's going to try to get rid of Syria with. It's doing work for you, man. I'm not going to lie. You pretty much... So I would say throw Syria's ability over to the Viper and... Chances of you. Maybe just block the unopposed. Yeah, unopposed. but Hotaw doesn't do that much at the moment. That's what I mean. I, uh, yeah, true. Just throw him in there. Because if, if I threw in Serio, then I could be losing two characters. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But I uh, do use Serio's ability, as you mentioned. And it looks like I'm going to go for the double block here. So, eight strength. I'll spend one. And there it is, he's kneeling the dragon, burning Sirio. You bet correctly, sir. But I'm not sure why I didn't only defend with 
Even your reactions to winning? Uh, Hota on that case. Oh, and there's the Gaston sending back, uh, Drogo back to hand, and the dupe falls off. Because he cannot be saved from Gaston Gray's ability. Yep, and I put a token on Boneway, and then Hotot dies as well. Wow. That's all? That's it. That's all she wrote. Uh, hmm? What? Oh, sorry. You asked reactions to winning, yeah. Yeah, because he's yeah. the first player. I have first reaction. Yeah, so go to me, and then I'll be able to do uh, any either Intrigue or Power with uh, Doran for three. I'm guessing Intrigue, because I want to get rid of Drogo. I'm not sure. I could just be going for the win. And then Normal Strength, uh, Viper at 13. Intrigue? Yeah, So, no defenders on the Intrigue, obviously. Post. And I pick. Well, that's There's good. Danny. Uh, that's also good. Drop insight. Yeah, and uh, big boy coming in for 13. Yep. 13 so. Or 15. Nope, 13. 13. 13. I heard you say it. So he's getting two, and then I get one for the end post. Uh, he gets dominance with his four gold. So looks like you're at 10. Five power to go, and he is at four. So I'm liking this board position. Yeah. <laughs> and we know so a march. We know the march is out of the way for both decks. Most likely, there's not a second one. Yeah. Um, you never know. It's not impossible. It, but yeah, it's not impossible, but it's good to feel that it's out of the way, most likely. And we know that the only card in his hand is Drogo. Uh, I flip the noble. He flips a filthy. Not bad. It would be awful for him if I draw a seal the hand, but. Yeah, he's just trying to hang in there at this point and hold you off from winning if he can yeah, get around. Yeah, to go first. Because remember, in the, the seventh plot, your uh, your effects all shut off. Yes. Which uh, sometimes suck. It can be awful. So he only throws out Drogo. Still going first, so he will be able to get a challenge off there. And I throw a dupe and a duped Dawn. <laughs> Insurance is paid, but he can't. So at least I'll have him attacking first up. with. Um, as long as you don't play out a military icon, the, the Drogo attacking first is fine. But if you play a military icon, that's a little dangerous now. Oh, <laughs> Arion's on the board, even worse. So you never know what's going to bounce in. I honestly wouldn't attack with Drogo. Yeah, there's Obara with a dupe. So you can't, he, he's just going to pass on challenges, I would think, right? But uh, Yeah, five power, uh, I think he would have to. Yeah. So I can lose, I would lose, well, yeah, I don't know if he has a chance here. Because I'm coming for Intrigue unopposed. And then you could, yeah you could just let him military he could block and then power I would get getting three off that power yeah and then I'm on one gold so I win dominance oh or I'm just an asshole <laughs> <and I'm playing laughs> coming in to seal the deal give me that icon I'm guessing that was power yep unopposing claim that's power yep <laughs> and the military which he will block. And it looks like yeah, an I think intrigue. that was a misplay on myself. Oh, there we go. Oh, Doran's game to seal the yeah. deal. And that's it. Not a chance there by Julian. Just couldn't get it going. But yeah, thanks to uh, X Planet for letting us play and host the tournament there. Thanks yep, to Kevin for joining me here on the commentary. Thank you everyone for watching. And uh, any last uh, words to say there, Kev? Uh, nope. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no. Always, always good to have other people on here, especially the ones playing in the games. To kind of, kind of get that inside, inside look at the game. And they will always be Martel Crossing. <laughs> they will always be Martel Crossing. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. See you guys in the next video. Thanks. Ta-da. So to stop my recording.